in the bustling Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. A man named Marcus Johnson, who happened to be wealthy, spotted a disabled woman struggling with her wheelchair. Unbeknownst to Marcus, the woman was Emily, a graphic designer who had been paralyzed from the waist down due to a car accident. Marcus, being a humble and philanthropic individual, approached Emily and kindly offered his assistance. Emily was pleasantly surprised by Marcus's gesture and explained her predicament, her flight had been delayed and she was concerned about missing her connecting flight to San Francisco. Without hesitation, Marcus decided to accompany her to the gate where she needed to catch her connecting flight. Along the way, they engaged in conversation, allowing Marcus to learn more about Emily's life and experiences. As a disabled person, he listened attentively as Emily shared the difficulties she faced while traveling and how people often stared at her. Upon reaching the gate, Marcus noticed that Emily's connecting flight had been canceled, leaving her stranded in Dallas for the night. Without a second thought, Marcus generously offered to cover the expenses for a hotel and any other needs Emily might have. Deeply touched by his kindness, Emily expressed her heartfelt gratitude. I can't thank you enough for your help. Marcus, you are such a compassionate person, she said. In response, Marcus humbly replied. It's the least I can do. I firmly believe in extending a helping hand whenever possible. In this heartwarming encounter at the airport, a wealthy man named Marcus Johnson selflessly assisted a disabled woman named Emily without any prior knowledge of her identity. Despite his financial status, Marcus demonstrated humility and a commitment to giving back to society. Through their conversation, Marcus gained insight into the challenges faced by disabled individuals, and he seized the opportunity to alleviate some of Emily's concerns by providing financial support. This act of kindness left a lasting impact on both Marcus and Emily, emphasizing the power of compassion and the importance of lending a helping hand to those in need. After exchanging contact information, Marcus bid farewell to Emily and boarded his flight to New York City. Emily, on the other hand, spent the night in her hotel room overwhelmed with gratitude for the stranger's unexpected acts of kindness and generosity. Determined to express her appreciation, she contacted a renowned artist, a close friend of hers, and commissioned him to create a magnificent painting of Marcus. The artist poured his heart and talent into the artwork, capturing the essence of Marcus's kind and gentle nature flawlessly. Emily was beyond thrilled when she received the finished masterpiece, eagerly awaiting the opportunity to present it. To Marcus as a token of her gratitude, several weeks passed and to Marcus's surprise, he received a package in the mail from Emily. As he opened it, he discovered an exquisite painting depicting himself. Accompanying the artwork was a heartfelt note from Emily, sharing the story behind her gesture. The words in the letter conveyed her profound appreciation for Marcus's assistance when she was stranded, and his ability to restore her hope when she felt lost. Marcus was deeply moved by the overwhelming gesture, and the genuine sentiment expressed by Emily. Filled with gratitude, he decided to call her, and personally express his heartfelt appreciation for the painting. When Emily answered the phone, Marcus's voice carried sincere warmth and appreciation. Hello, Emily, this is Marcus, he began. I just wanted to reach out and let you know that I received the painting. I'm at a loss for words, it is truly a stunning piece. And your kindness has touched me deeply. Emily responded with genuine pleasure, expressing her delight that Marcus appreciated her gesture. I'm so glad you liked it, she said. I wanted to find a special way to show my gratitude for your kindness at the airport. You truly are a wonderful person, and I feel so fortunate to have met you. 
Marcus couldn't adequately convey. The depth of his appreciation over the phone. But he thanked Emily sincerely for the painting and the thoughtfulness behind it. Their conversation continued as they shared stories and laughter. Realizing that their chance encounter at the airport had developed into a meaningful connection. And so a simple act of kindness blossomed into a beautiful friendship. Woven together by gratitude, art. And the shared recognition of the goodness in each other's hearts. He extended an invitation to her. Inviting her to join him in New York City. Where he could give her a tour of the city. And introduce her to some of his colleagues in the finance industry. Emily eagerly accepted the offer without any hesitation. She had always nurtured a desire to visit New York City. And she was genuinely excited about the surprises Marcus had planned for her. Several weeks later, Emily boarded a flight to New York City, where Marcus was waiting to pick her up from the airport. He escorted her to her hotel. And then embarked on showing her around the vibrant city. Together, they explored iconic landmarks such as the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty and Central Park. During their time together, Marcus and Emily engaged in heartfelt conversations about their lives, passions and dreams. Marcus gained insight into Emily's profession as a graphic designer, and was deeply impressed by her talent and creativity. Likewise, Emily learned about Marcus's endeavors in the finance industry and his philanthropic pursuits. She found herself inspired by his unwavering dedication to helping others and his unwavering commitment to making a positive impact in the world. Over the next few days, Marcus introduced Emily to some of his colleagues in the finance industry. He arranged dinners, meetings and events where Emily could first-hand witness the remarkable work Marcus was doing to make a difference. Witnessing Marcus's remarkable generosity and his genuine desire to give back to society, Emily was filled with admiration. She found solace in Marcus's unwavering determination to leverage his wealth for the betterment of those in need. As her visit came to an end, Emily expressed her heartfelt gratitude to Marcus for his kindness and generosity. She conveyed her immense appreciation for his support and willingness to assist her during her time of need. Marcus, you are an extraordinary individual. And I feel blessed to have crossed paths with you, Emily said. Your acts of kindness and generosity have truly inspired me. And I am determined to follow your example and pay it forward. Marcus smiled warmly at her words and embraced her. Emily, you are an incredible person. And I am equally grateful to have met you, Marcus replied. You have shown me the true essence of kindness. And I will strive to live up to your example. As Emily departed for the airport, she carried with her a deep sense of gratitude for the invaluable experience and profound lessons she had learned. She came to the realization that acts of kindness and generosity hold the power to profoundly impact people's lives. Determined to contribute her part in making the world a better place. She embarked on a mission to spread goodwill. Marcus, too, experienced a transformative shift in perspective. He recognized that material wealth and success held no true value without kindness and generosity. Inspired by Emily's example, he made a vow to utilize his resources to bring about positive change in the world. From that day forward, Marcus and Emily remained close friends, staying connected through phone calls, emails and occasional visits. They continued to inspire and support one another, sharing their passions and dreams, while consistently striving to make a positive difference in the world. As years passed, Emily diligently pursued her career, establishing a reputable name for herself and achieving financial comfort. Throughout her journey, she never forgot about Marcus and the kindness he had shown her during her time of need. Then, one day, Emily received a call from a colleague, informing her that Marcus had fallen seriously ill and was hospitalized in New York City. 
Devastated by the news, she immediately booked a flight to visit him. Upon arriving at the hospital, Emily was taken aback by Marcus's deteriorated state. He appeared frail, connected to various machines. And barely conscious. She sat by his bedside, holding his hand. And spoke to him in an attempt to provide solace and encouragement. Hoping that he could hear her words. Days turned into weeks. Yet Emily never missed a day of visiting Marcus. She brought him books to read played his favorite music, and reminisced about the good times they had shared. Her unwavering support aimed to uplift his spirits, and offer comfort during this challenging time. One fateful day, as Emily sat by Marcus's bedside, he unexpectedly opened his eyes and locked gazes with her. Filled with hope, she smiled and gently uttered, Marcus, it's me, Emily, I'm here for you. In that moment, Marcus's eyes widened with recognition. And he struggled to speak. However, his voice emerged feeble and strained. Emily leaned in closer. Intently trying to decipher his words. Eager to grasp any message he wished to convey. Emily Marcus whispered her gratitude repeatedly. Her voice barely audible. Tears welled up in her eyes as she replied. No, Marcus, thank you. Thank you for being there for me when I needed it most. Thank you for inspiring me to become a better person. Marcus weakly smiled. Closing his eyes and drifting off to sleep. Emily sat by Marcus's bedside. Holding his hand and praying for his recovery. However, a few days later, Marcus passed away. Leaving Emily heartbroken and devastated. She couldn't fathom that he was gone. And a profound sense of loss and sadness engulfed her. At Marcus's funeral, Emily stood before the gathering, and spoke passionately about the impact he had made on her life. She shared the valuable lessons he had taught her about kindness, generosity and the power of human connection. Emily emphasized the countless lives Marcus had touched, and the positive difference he had made in the world. As she concluded her eulogy, a sense of peace and closure washed over her. She knew that Marcus's legacy would endure through the people he had influenced. And she vowed to carry on his work of making the world a better place. A few days after the funeral, Emily received a letter from Marcus's lawyer. The contents stunned her. Marcus had bequeathed a substantial amount of money to her in his will. Along with the inheritance was a note that read, Emily, thank you for showing me the true meaning of kindness and generosity. I hope this gift enables you to continue making a positive difference in the world. Emily was overwhelmed by Marcus's incredible generosity. Even in death, he continued to help others and leave a lasting impact on the world. With the funds Marcus had bestowed upon her, Emily decided to establish a foundation dedicated to assisting individuals with disabilities, including herself, who needed support to pursue their dreams. She named the foundation after Marcus as a tribute to his legacy and the profound influence he had on her life. Through the Marcus Foundation, Emily aimed to carry forward his mission of making a positive difference in the world ensuring that his legacy would endure for generations to come. Over the years, the Marcus Foundation has grown into a highly esteemed organization that has made a profound impact on the lives of numerous individuals with disabilities. Through their efforts, thousands of people have been able to pursue their passions and achieve their dreams. Emily, who had the privilege of continuing Marcus's legacy, felt a deep sense of pride and gratitude for the work she was involved in. Reflecting on her life, Emily realized that a chance encounter with Marcus at an airport had transformed her existence in unimaginable ways. It had opened her eyes to the true essence of kindness, generosity, and the power of human connection. Now, let's shift our attention to Sarah. 
a successful and affluent businesswoman. On an ordinary day, she concluded a lunch meeting at an upscale restaurant in downtown. As she prepared to depart, her eyes caught sight of a young boy. No older than ten. Rummaging through the trash cans behind the establishment. Intrigued, Sarah approached the boy and kindly inquired. What are you doing there, little one? Startled. The boy looked up and hastily attempted. To conceal the leftovers he had salvaged from the trash. Sarah's heart filled with a pang of sadness upon noticing the situation. Sarah extended a kind gesture as she asked the hungry boy. Are you hungry? The hesitant boy unsure of trusting this unfamiliar wealthy stranger. Eventually nodded without a second thought. Grateful. Adam joined Sarah for lunch. And as they sat at a nearby table. Sarah ordered a full meal for both of them. During their meal, Sarah delved into the boy's story. Discovering his name was Adam and he lived on the streets with his struggling mother. Despite their challenges, Sarah found Adam to be bright, resilient, and adorned with a contagious smile that brightened the room. Touched by his tale and impressed by his strength, Sarah realized the true value of life extended far beyond material possessions she had amassed. From that day forward, Sarah made it her mission to visit the restaurant every day sharing her leftovers with Adam. Their conversations became an opportunity for them to learn more about each other's lives, dreams and struggles. As time passed, Sarah's dedication to Adam's well-being grew stronger. She assisted him in enrolling in a local school, provided him with new clothes, and even helped his mother secure a job. News of Sarah's extraordinary kindness spread throughout the community leaving people in awe of the wealthy woman who took an interest in a young boy from humble beginnings. However, Sarah's intentions were far from seeking fame or recognition. She genuinely cared about Adam and wanted to make a positive impact on his life. One day, as they concluded their lunch, Sarah posed a question that had been weighing on her mind. Adam, would you like to come and live with me? Adam looked up his eyes brimming with surprise. The thought of such a possibility had never crossed his mind. I know it's a big decision, Sarah continued. But I want to ensure you have a safe and comfortable home where you can study, play, and grow. Adam's excitement was palpable. The prospect of living with Sarah seemed like a dream come true. Over the following weeks, their bond deepened as they prepared for this significant change in both their lives. Sarah diligently made all the necessary arrangements. She went ahead and hired a compassionate social worker to ensure Adam's mother would receive the care she needed. In addition, Sarah prepared a cozy room in her own home for Adam. Finally, the long-awaited day arrived. Sarah eagerly went to the restaurant to pick up Adam. As they walked out hand in hand, a profound sense of joy and purpose overwhelmed Sarah. This was a feeling she had never experienced before. Are you ready, Adam? Sarah asked with anticipation. Adam's face lit up with a wide grin. Yes, Sarah, I'm ready, he replied. And so Sarah and Adam embarked on a new journey together. One that would forever change their lives. As they drove away from the restaurant, Sarah turned to Adam. Her voice filled with warmth. You know, Adam. You may have started as a little boy who relied on my restaurant leftovers. But now you mean so much more to me. You're like a son to me. Adam's eyes welled up with tears of happiness. And he tightly embraced Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, he whispered gratefully. Thank you for everything. In that tender moment. Sarah realized that true wealth was not measured by money or possessions, but by the love and connection she had found with Adam. As they arrived at Sarah's grand mansion, Adam couldn't help but feel overwhelmed. He had never laid eyes on such a beautiful house before. Sensing his mixed emotions, 
Sarah reassured him. Don't worry, Adam. You'll get used to it. But remember, it's not the house that makes a home. It's the people who live in it. Adam nodded. His heart filled with gratitude for Sarah's wisdom and guidance. Over the next few weeks, Adam settled into his new life with Sarah. He enthusiastically attended school made new friends, and gradually adapted to living in a large house. However, amidst the opulent surroundings, Adam discovered that the true essence of happiness lay in the simple joys of life. The grandeur of the mansion paled in comparison to the warmth and love he felt from Sarah. Together, Sarah and Adam created a loving home where laughter echoed through the halls and compassion flowed abundantly. They formed an unbreakable bond that would withstand any challenge. Adam blossomed under Sarah's care. His past struggles gradually fading into distant memories. In the end, this tale is not just about a remarkable transformation. From poverty to abundance. It's a testament to the immeasurable power of love. And the profound impact that one person's selflessness can have on another's life. Sarah's act of kindness not only changed Adam's life forever, but also transformed her own, reminding her of the true purpose of her existence, to bring light and joy into the world. And as their story continues to unfold, Sarah and Adam stand as a shining example of the incredible miracles that can be achieved when hearts are touched and lives are intertwined by love. Adam always remained grounded, never forgetting his humble beginnings. He cherished the opportunities that came his way, and never took anything for granted. Sarah, too, underwent a profound transformation through her experiences with Adam. Although she had always been driven and ambitious, she began to realize that life held more significance then mere work and success. Sarah's newfound perspective motivated her to volunteer at local charities, generously donating a portion of her wealth to help those in need. Inspired by Adam's story, she even established a foundation in his name, providing support to children facing similar struggles. This sudden change in behavior surprised Sarah's colleagues and friends, who had known her as a ruthless and driven businesswoman. However, Sarah cared little about their opinions. She found contentment in the person she was becoming, recognizing that her life had acquired a new purpose. One day, while basking in the warmth of the sun and a gentle breeze, Sarah turned to Adam and expressed her gratitude. She acknowledged how he had transformed her life, allowing her to discover an untapped capacity for love and compassion. Adam, with a smile on his face, reciprocated the sentiment. Sarah had given him a home, a family, and a future. Overwhelmed with emotion, Sarah tightly embraced Adam. Tears welling up in her eyes, she professed her immense gratitude, acknowledging the valuable lessons he had taught her. In that moment, Sarah knew that her life would never be the same. She had discovered true wealth not in material possessions, but in the impoverished little boy who had relied on her leftover meals from a restaurant. From that day forward, Sarah and Adam continued their journey together, united by a deep love and a shared sense of purpose. Despite facing challenges and obstacles, they found solace in knowing they had each other. In their unique way, they continued to inspire others demonstrating that genuine wealth and happiness are derived from the connections we forge and the impact we have on the lives of others. Steve Walton, a wealthy businessman, found himself facing an unexpected encounter that would change his life. After being informed by his butler that Reverend Morris was waiting to see him, Steve reluctantly welcomed the pastor into his home. Exhausted from a lengthy flight, he was in no mood for sermons or pleas for help. Impatiently, he waved a hurried hand, urging the pastor to get straight to the point. All right, what do you want this time? Steve blurted out. His weariness evident. 
The pastor whispered. Mr. Walton, I saw Susan. Steve's heart skipped a beat. It had been fifteen years. Since his only daughter had disappeared from his life without a trace. Susan. Steve cried out frantically. Where is she? How is she doing? Pastor Morris explained. I was in Los Angeles assisting a friend who runs a mission for the homeless. That's where I saw her. Hope and concern washed over Steve. As he eagerly pressed for more information. Did she volunteer? Did you let her know I've been searching for her? The pastor's voice softened as he replied. No, Mr. Walton, she wasn't a volunteer. She's a vagrant, living in a car with her children. Steve felt his legs give way and he had to sit down. Homeless. Susan. And she had children. The weight of his past decisions crashed down on him. Whose children? Steve managed to ask, his voice trembling. The preacher's reply pierced his heart. Her husband passed away three years ago. Mr. Walton. She didn't want to bring her kids into a home where their father was hated. Steve was overwhelmed by a surge of familiar anger. Susan was still defying him. Even after fifteen long years. Memories flooded back to the incident in his study, the confrontation. The shouting and Susan's unwavering gaze as he yelled at her. Pregnant at sixteen and by the gardener. We'll take care of that. So, he is no longer employed. Steve recalled his words with regret. He had cast her out. Banishing his own daughter for choosing a poor man over his wealth. In that moment, a transformation began within Steve. The anger that had consumed him for so many years. Now morphed into remorse and determination. He realized the pain he had caused. The love he had withheld and the opportunity he had squandered. Steve Walton, the once aloof and callous father, made a decision. He would find his daughter and mend their broken bond. No longer driven by anger but by love and a desire to make amends. He set out on a journey to find Susan wherever she may be. The path to redemption would not be easy. Steve would have to confront his past mistakes. Earn his daughter's forgiveness. And prove that he had changed. But he was willing to do whatever it took. To rebuild the shattered relationship with his long-lost daughter. And provide a better future for her and her children. As Steve stepped into the unknown. His heart filled with hope. With determination and a newfound understanding. He embarked on a journey of reconciliation. Hoping to find Susan and begin the process of rebuilding their lives together. In a tense and emotional exchange. Susan revealed to Steve that the man she loves and plans. To marry is none other than her child's father. The revelation left Steve furious. Declaring that if she goes through with the marriage. She would be on her own. Tears streaming down her face. Susan bid farewell to Steve, expressing her love for him and walked away. Leaving him behind. Overwhelmed by the situation, Steve initiated a search for Susan. Assigning investigators to track her down. Despite their efforts, they were unable to locate her. Seeking guidance, Steve approached Pastor Morris. Who revealed that Susan had four children, three girls and a boy. Deeply moved, Steve made a decision to reunite with his young daughter. And asked the pastor to accompany him. Within hours, the two men embarked on a journey to Los Angeles. Boarding Steve's private aircraft. Guided by Pastor Morris. They arrived at a parking lot near a large mall. Where they were greeted by a woman named Lima. Who was waiting for them with a pickup truck. The truck, equipped with a tent at the back served as temporary shelter for Susan and her children. As Pastor Morris explained, Susan had fallen on hard times. After her husband's unfortunate workplace accident, the insurance company denied the payout. And the bank eventually seized her mortgage. Determined to keep her family together, Susan worked as a cleaner at the mall. 
making ends meet as best she could. By the end of each day, she and her children would enjoy the mall's amenities and purchase leftover food from the restaurants, ensuring their basic needs were met. As Steve and Pastor Morris approached the truck, they were greeted by laughter and the joyful voices of children. Two youngsters, a girl around 14 years old and a boy around 7, were engaged in a playful tickling session. Suddenly, the children noticed the presence of Steve and Pastor Morris, and called out to Susan, exclaiming that her old friend was here. The reunion was filled with a mix of emotions. As Steve embraced his daughter for the first time in years, overwhelmed with joy and gratitude, Susan shared the challenges she had faced. While trying to provide for her children, despite the circumstances, she had managed to ensure they were fed, clothed and attending school. United once again, this newfound family faced an uncertain future. But they had the strength of their love and determination to overcome whatever challenges lie ahead. The bonds of family and the power of reconciliation had prevailed. Reminding us that even in the face of adversity, love has the potential to bring us back together. In a familiar voice, Preacher Morris called out from inside the tent. Steve turned his gaze and saw Susan stepping out of the vehicle. The surprise on her face was evident. When she spotted him standing next to the pastor, her eyes welled up with tears as she asked. Daddy? Steve couldn't believe his eyes. Although Susan was only 31 years old, she appeared considerably older. Her hands roughened by hard work and her face marked by stress and anguish. Daddy, what did he do to my princess? Steve exclaimed. I wanted you so much and now you're with that loser. How could he help you escape poverty? Susan shook her head, her voice filled with sadness. Daddy, he loved me and gave me four beautiful children. I had nowhere else to go after he passed away. I've done everything I can for my kids. And I've always loved you, Papa. I will always adore the father of my children. Tears streamed down Steve's face as he pleaded. Susan, forgive me. Please, forgive me. I want all of you to come home with me. Let me help you take care of the kids. As Steve found himself comforting his sobbing daughter. He realized that everything would be okay. Susan gave him a tour of his three grandchildren. Before placing her hand on the young man's shoulder. And this is tiny Stevie, she said with a smile. You gave him my name. Steve was shocked. I did. Why? She whispered. Daddy, I love you. Don't you understand? Later that day, they all took flights back to Texas. For each one of them, it marked the beginning of a better life. 